And now, detailing success in PNS Double Black present the Rennie Doyle Podcast, a podcast for blue-collar entrepreneurs. Hosted by the detailer of Air Force One and founder of both detailing success and the detail mafia, Rennie Doyle. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? So picture this. Okay. You ready? Got your mic Ready. Here. So we go, we have a great event with Bob Phillips. You know, we did a, a PNS Double Black event down with one of our partners in uh, Rancho Cucamonga. So we went to 3D Products, matter of fact, and did a staff training. So we've got this massive mega storm coming in, right? And everything's kind of been missing us. So then we also have this new to me uh, Wrangler in the back. That's basically, if you imagine a saber tooth tiger that needs, that needs dental work for headlights. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when they put the aftermarket headlights in, somebody didn't know how to adjust headlights. So um, I start coming back up the mountain, and, and uh, you know, it, it looks like I stopped by uh, some Mafia members' shop. Oscar was there, and we, we kind of hung out for a little while and talked with them. Um, great conversation. And, it, it, and you could see Mount Baldy, it's starting to come in. So I say, I'm going to boogie out. Traffic's horrible, so I stopped. The, start coming up the mountain. It's a complete whiteout. It's snowing, but the big problem is is fog. You know, the, the storm's coming in. Well, uh -huh. you've, got, you've got Mater over here that's got, you know, headlights going mainly up, uh, but a little bit this way and a little bit that way and a little bit this way. I can't <laughs> see shit. And so that was a very nerve-wracking ride home. Well, you got to get those headlights adjusted. I, well, it's sitting in position now. It's it's sitting there. Um, you know, I don't know if they're quality. I might have to get a new set. I'll, I'll see what happens, you know. Yeah. I think I got it figured out. But I've got it set, measured perfectly. And, you know, the night before I thought about doing it, but I thought, eh, I'll beat the storm up. They're are, there, are there auxiliary lights on that thing too, right? Um, there are. The problem is, problem is, there's picture this. We'll picture this number two is they didn't install them so you know i've got to have everything wired up and everything else so learning experience but i will not tell you i don't know if i should even ask me at the end if i if i if i should tell you how i got up safely okay now i do you know i've done a lot of off-roading i've done search and rescue for 30 something years military right i'm not sure if i'm going to own we'll see if enough people request if i own how i got up the mountain or not I finally got up. So all right. Well, I'm I'm sure they will. We'll 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 see. We'll see. <laughs> so you know, it's uh, man. We had a great week last week. Um, I'm kind of um, homesick for the fellows that were here. We just had a. We always have great classes, but last week was just a to another level. You know, it just was pretty insane. You know. Um, yeah, we had a <coughs> uh, we had a good group. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. So today, you know, we're gonna talk about how do you know when it's time to ask for help? Now, what was the gentleman's name that asked that question? I want to give credit to him. So if you can go back and find um, that. It was, I've got it right here. And, and, and while Chris is looking for that, we, we spent was, days it was, talking. It was Nathan Garrett that asked it for the podcast okay. last week. So Nathan, I think this is a great we talk about success and moving forward and evolving your business, but you know, I thought that was a great um question and and even today <clears throat> donating a whole podcast to it you know we could spend days to it and so i'm going to change the the word when when you know it's time to ask for help i'm going to change that word to guidance and um i think it's all the time as i said that last time is i'm constantly looking for guidance um not necessarily help but there is a time when you need help right this is a huge, huge, huge topic, and we're going to go into um, how we categorized it is I, I broke it down into um, um, several segments and then beginning help, uh, which is kind of year one to five, intermediate help, and then advanced guidance, if you so to say. So let's jump into this in all stages again. I mean, right now, I mean, Bob Phillips and I, we, you know, we haven't had a lot of time to just have one-on-one -on -one 
uh, events <clears throat> like we used to. And we're doing it a lot more this year because it's just a way for us to get, you know, reconnected and kind of remember what, you know, Dave, his and my goal was when we kind of went on this journey. And I'll tell you, it was a lot of fun yesterday. And, uh, and again, guidance, you know, input, um, mentorship, coaching, all these different terms that you've got. But we all go through periods of weakness. We go through periods of strengths. No one has immunity from having weak moments. No one has immunity from having challenges in life uh, pop up. Um, I, I, I never had such a challenging life as last year. I've lost people and everything else. But last year, it was just a different set of challenges. And we all have it. And, and I'll tell you, it made me a better person. And it's just like we talked to some people in the last week that are really struggling. You know, it's been a tough winter for a lot of people, uh, especially new people in business. And they're kind of, it's been their first struggle. And I'll tell you, looking back, those early years when I really did struggle and was building it up, those are some really sweet moments. I don't want to go back to those moments, <laughs> but I had to pay that price and I can look back and reflect. And even last year, as challenging as last year was, I got to tell you, man, it was a learning experience. I mean, uh, there's some of the things that could have gone without, right? I mean, Chris and I both uh, could have done that. But the, the, the items you couldn't just, you, you just, even those items I learned from. Um, and so we're constantly, all of us are facing those, those, those new chapters and those new challenges in our business. Don't be ashamed. You know, swallow your pride. When you don't know something, that's actually, for me, that's intelligence and courage is that is that somebody holds it out and just tries to keep fixing it on their own. That's ignorance on fire is that you're just you're just going to hurt yourself more and more than the people around you. Um, you know, all of us, so many of us, you know, I look at people that my my most admired colleagues and friends and family are those that humble themselves enough to realize and can find that they've got weaknesses and that they hurt and that they need a little assistance and they need a little bump up and they need a little confidence build is those end up being the most, you know, rich, one of my best friends, 20 something years, army aviation. He's still a, an active rescue pilot and um, in civilian world. And one of my dearest, dearest, dearest friends. And, you know, here's this, this, this warrior, um, this guy that's just, tough the nails and smart and everything else but you know he's we can show vulnerability to each other and it's okay you know i mean we don't you know look for a safe place or anything like that we're not that that you know way but we we do we do confine in each other and uh when we've we've been hurt you know relationships or by by uh confrontations with family or you know our, our spouses or whatever we can as men come to each other and own those things with each other you know i think it's i think the world of rich i think he's powerful and somebody i really look up to um seek people out that are at the level you wish to arrive at now this is a big one is so many people seek people out then they want to be them overnight you, you know you got to be careful as you got to remember is anybody that's written a book knows that the book wasn't written all at one time it was one chapter at a time and it's really orchestrated uh, it takes a team to write a book. And basically what you're doing in, in, in your business and in your life is you're, you're writing many books, hopefully not one book, hopefully many books. And so you've got to you've got to build off the chapters you've written and you've got to envision and, and, and build the chapters you've yet to, to write. And so, you know, when you look up to these people at a different level, make sure that you're not falsely wanting to be where they're at overnight. And, and remember, you've got to earn that position. It's not going to just happen. And don't wish yourself into misery, meaning that so many people, oh, man, I want what he want. Man, look at that house. Look at those cars. Look at it. took that person time or they were just a spoiled brat, you know, one or the other. But in most cases, it took time. Is It's going to take you time. And so let's talk, Chris, a little bit about three signs that kind of, indicate that you might need some input going on in your life is that, yeah we that you you come up oh, with a couple of great say, yeah we have a, we have a few of them here um i kind of bro broke them out here we actually got 
three signs that you may need help and then three signs that you may need financial help. Um, yeah. You know, because they're a little different. Not, you know, help doesn't always come in the form of money. Right. So. Yep. But um, why don't you cover yeah. the three things that that show you need some help, some guidance, and then I'll cover yeah, so the that, financial stuff. How's that? You got it. The uh, the first one that uh, we got in our notes here is you're going in circles. So, you know, this one, this one may seem pretty obvious, but, you know, you, if you've been working towards a goal, you're not really making any meaningful progress. Um, you're just kind of stagnant with that goal uh, going in circles. Like it says, you know, that's a sign that you may need help. You may need some additional guidance to help you break free of you know, of, of where you're at, you know, and, and start moving forward again. Um, <clears throat> the other sign that you may need help is if you need to accomplish, you know, a goal quickly or you need results fast, right? So you may not be able to have the time, you know, have the time to, to do it all on your own to accomplish that goal on that timeline, you know? So, you know, it, it takes time to do something and accomplish something on your own. So getting the right help, the right mentor can help cut down on that time considerably for you. You know, it's kind of it's kind of what you like to say, Rennie, you know, the reason why you like to help people, you know, it took you 20, 30 years to accomplish what you did. You want to cut that in half for the next group of guys. You know, it's the yeah, same absolutely. idea. there. Absolutely. You, you look at Justin, <clears throat> Justin Lobato, other people. Um, and some some of you might not know who Justin are. A lot of you are going to. But, you know, he's pro probably cut five years off of what it took me to do it uh this generation that now justin's starting to really push up maybe they're going to cut cut seven or eight years off and then eventually i don't know if we're going to ever cut it in two but we're going to significantly reduce it and then again it, it it comes down to the actual next one which is financial guidance is you're carrying debt you know is that if you're going and oscar said this last night we're talking to a couple of young entrepreneurs and he says, you know, if you're if you're taking and putting this this bottle of XYZ supply product <clears throat> on your credit card and you're buying the smallest amount and you're buying it every couple of days and you're, and, and you're not paying that credit card every month, there's a problem. There's a problem yeah. is that you're not buying right. Um, you know, you're not you're you're you're, you're looking at this. Something, something's not right. Um, if you're going into deeper debt, if those credit cards just keep adding up and you're not paying that balance off. Um, if you're using credit cards to pay for supplies and you're not able every month to pay it off. I mean, we, we live today. We're in a society to where, you know, I remember when ATM cards came into play, you know, way back in the eighties and it was kind of a weird, it's kind of a weird sensation, but then you really couldn't, you really couldn't pay for, you could just go take money out, transfer money, make deposits. You really couldn't pay for anything. And then it started switching over to where you could, you know, use it like a, a credit card. Right. And 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 it was pretty cool because you didn't have to go into debt. But at the same token, you know, is um, I think a lot of uh, young people are irresponsible. People really got in trouble with it because they're just, you know, emptying their accounts out. They're going and playing with stuff. But, you know, if you're struggling and, and you can't pay your monthly bills, some, something's going on. If you're robbing pay, Peter to pay Paul, it happens. I, I get it. But that might be a time that where, you know, I, I, I told somebody recently, listen, if you're really struggling, you need to make your business your side gig for just a little bit. Is that we're coming out of winter, you know, it's going to change here in a little bit. But, you know, I mean, Chris, you mentioned it and a couple other people mentioned it, is go drive for Uber. You know, go, go, you know, I don't do the food app things, but go, go take and, and, and work with one of the food app things. I mean, it's flexible. Um, you can, you can take it and during the busy, busy holiday time. If you live in an area like here, you could kill it. We, I've got a friend I was just talking about last night about this. He goes and does it. Um, he's, he's set, but he likes to make some side money. He says the thing, he's got a very economical car. It, it gets like 47 miles of the gallon or some crazy thing like that. Right. Very clean, smells right. He's got a little portable vacuum that he uses in it almost every, you know, almost every ride. Uh, but he says my biggest and he's this guy's a, a former um, military and, and police officer and SWAT team member. He's a really big, intimidating guy. But he says my goal is to be so friendly 
He said that my half my half the people that I I I I drive leave me a cash tip and and a 20% tip on the app. And he says, so I'll walk out in a in a in a really busy night with a hundred dollars worth of tips alone and then another hundred to two hundred dollars worth of you know income from the fares. Well, how can you beat that? I mean, if you're in the area that's that's productive, if not, you know, go 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 wait tables, go go be a bartender, so, something that stops the bleeding, as I call it, is that you just can't and, and I don't care, man. I'm telling you what, right now, is that if things slow down. I mean, I'm I'm well seasoned into my my career, my life. I would have no problem doing that. I just don't want to eat savings. The other thing, the financial thing, if you're dipping into savings or you have no savings, and I, I want people that are listening to this to write this down. If you're going to go into business, and 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 listen, I've got a bicycle over there. I went into survival mode, you know, as a kid. I went into survival mode with a with 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 a uh, a nozzle, you know. I understand that, but. I also understood that I had to, the, the business wasn't going to take and allow me to work. It wasn't going to support my need, financial needs full time. So I've always said when your business has got that minimal, and I'll tell you, this is spooky, six months of income. So what you do is you, you write down all of your bills for your personal life and your business. You add that up. That's your nut every month. And you've got to have at least six to 12 months saved up in savings before you can take and start really, really taking off. You've got to have that nest egg. And then every year I used to take and grow it. This is going way back 20 something years. I would try to grow that by 10 to 20 grand every single year. And, and pretty soon, you, you know, you've got 50 grand, you've got 60 grand, you've got a hundred grand sitting there. That wasn't play money. That wasn't money to go buy a car. That was, you know, survive a, a, an economic turndown, uh, to survive a 9-11, to survive in the event that we, we go to war, survive something that another, you know, COVID outbreak happens. That money there is used specifically for survival tac- tactics. As you get older, and we'll cover that here in a bit, it may switch and you may be investing it in different ways. So some big items. Uh, this is huge. Um, admit what you know and what you don't know. Uh, for instance, I am not an accountant. I'm not a really good bookkeeper. Um, I can do it, but I don't enjoy it. So I outsource it. Savings. We talked about savings reality. Um, you've got to, every, every single time you bring money in, you've got to stick money aside. It was pretty cool. We were down with Phil yesterday and we're talking about this with him and his staff. And Phil opened up his wallet and he pulled out some money and, and dollar bills were turned the other way. He has kept for, I think, 20 something years. He was down to his last three dollars and he keeps those three one dollar bills in his wallet. And he has for 20, 20 years, uh, just as a reminder of, you know, where he was and where he's come from. Um, his, his business can be a side gig and maybe maybe you need a side gig is you've got to be honest with yourself. Don't wait the second that you take and start having to go use credit or you start pulling out of savings, that's the time to go freaking Uber, you know, and, and, and do so, figure something out just to stop the bleeding. It's listen, I've got my admiration for you doing that. I've got disrespect. If you don't, if you, if you just keep thinking, I can do it, I can do it. I can do it. You probably can, but I know you can, if you're not in debt and I know you can, if, You've got a positive outlook, and I know you can if you feel good about yourself. But what's going to happen is you're going to dig yourself in deeper. You're going to start thinking about yourself badly, and you're going to, especially when it's like, okay, I, I don't have much left, and I'm in trouble, and I might lose my business. God, just don't let that happen. If you're in that spot right now, stop the bleeding. Go get something. It's okay. You'll make it. You'll make it. Um, farming uh, is is forming a business organization. What kind of organization are you? Everybody wants to start an LLC. Everybody wants to start, you know, an S corp. Everybody wants to start a C corp. Is 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 the very next thing? Go engage a CPA. And it really, until you're probably doing 100, 200, 300, half billion dollars, maybe even a million dollars a year, you won't, you you might be better off running as a sole proprietor. Um, most times, when I talk to people, they're forming an LLC for the wrong reasons. They're doing it for protection, which Honestly, it doesn't give you much, uh, especially in 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 uh, states like California, New York, stuff like that. It, it just doesn't matter. 
I want it for for assets. I want it. I'm going to build it up. If I'm in a partnership, I'm going to build it up as a way to distribute income. Um, you really, I think it's. I think just the sole proprietorship is underused, and and and, and LLCs are are for the for the beginning. I'm talking super small. They're overrated. Now, once you start making some money, you know it might even be better to go to an S corporation. And so that's why you want to go to a CPA. You don't want to outsource all that, your pre-tax uh, tax, uh, estimates, everything else for your quarterly taxes, your early taxes, all this stuff. Um, your 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 pre-tax savings on earnings. Um, a lot of people don't understand is that you can put a, I mean, so many ways that the rich lose use utilize loopholes to save themselves as you start growing and you start making income is you can take and 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 put money into a um, a healthcare account you can put in retirement uh, all kinds of different things and you're not taxed on that money and it's a great way for your company to to show lesser lesser taxation or have a less tax uh, obligation and then also for you to grow your wealth uh, but it's long-term thinking so let's talk chris for a second about the beginning now uh, those that are in the that, that one that one one to five year mark and i know a lot of you going, man i'm four or five years in i'm not at the beginning i mean you got to look at this with um, perspective is that <clears throat> from a seasoned entrepreneur, you really are. And the one thing I can tell you, as I saw in these young guys yesterday, the one thing they haven't been is, is older. The one thing I've, or both things I've been is older and younger. And I understand, I look back at things. So, uh, you know, I'm going to call bullshit when I see it is that, you know, beginning is really that year one to five and, Somehow you're going to find that out during your journey, maybe even longer for some people. But your pre-startup is your finances, is that I know some of you are diving this business and, and it's a survival method. Um, you still have to have your finances in order, your taxes. Uh, your, and if you think you're going to dodge paying taxes, man, that's going to come back and creep up and that could bite you in the ass. That could shut you down. Uh, again, if, if you're using a survival, maybe have a side gig just to get you through um, CPA engagement. It's so important to engage. You know, everybody thinks about an attorney. I, I'm much more concerned about the CPAs side of it than I am an attorney. I mean, our, our CPAs, you know, through the years have been able to form corporations for it. They, it's not too often that unless we're going into contracts that we need, we need an attorney uh, market evaluation. You've got to be able to take and a know how to evaluate your market and what to look at. Um, you have to have a business plan, and then and then you got to look at your initial investments uh, for the first five years. What's that look like in product, equipment, education, marketing, savings, your launch, your mobile system, or your lease of uh, your lease improvements in your building, uh, your lease, all your deposits on that for your utilities, for the actual building, for the improvements, for the city. Uh, we we're talking to somebody yesterday that is doing an improvement uh, on their building in the in the city they're in. They want them to do eight hundred thousand dollars worth of improvement on city property for beautification. Eight hundred thousand dollars. So, did you know that before you know you went in? Probably not. And so, those are the things that you really want to investigate and find out. A lot of towns now for mobile operators is they're really they're onto this now, and 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 the penalties for operating within their jurisdiction are pretty high if you're not licensed. And so, you got to look at that. So. The other kind of concepts that you've got to look at and you've got to get into your brain is your slow month survival. How are you going to do that? And again, that's going to come back to, you know, COVID when first COVID launched. I talked to so many people that put on a complete facade on, on the Internet, on social media, on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok. Here they are a week into it and they're like, dang, dude, if I can't open back up, I'm, I'm going to I got to shut down. And I'm like, how can you be 10 days into something? You're supposed to be so freaking um, successful and you're already broke. And it turns out these people live in apartments. They're not. And, and hey, listen, I live in apartments for many years. I, I mean, I bought a house pretty young, but I, I, I've been there. But these are, these are ballers. These are people pretending to be at the very, very top and they weren't. Don't be that. Don't be that. There's you know, a it's saying kinda- I, it's, it's kind of like the restaurant industry. Um, you know, I actually uh, was listening to a podcast this week, Mike Rowe, and uh, it was talking about the restaurant industry. Did you know the average restaurant 
can uh, has about 18 days <clears throat> worth of reserves in the bank. 18 days. 18 days, and that's well, it. You know, that's you why look at this, that's why two two weeks to flatten the curve didn't work out too well for him. No, it, it was horrible. <laughs> and <clears throat> we look at the average American; they say they're just one or two paychecks away from going broke. And if you look yep. at that, those are people that own homes. You know, um, so it's really you know. I don't know. You know, I'm real. I'm in a really good spot right now. You know, I went on a little spinning spree when everything was good, right? I bought some cars and we had a deal with Porsche and we drove 18 amazing new Porsches over, you know, a year and a half, 19 new Porsches, something like that. It was a great, you know, it was a great run. But I saw the economy change and I went, mm, two reasons. A, self preservation. I practice what I preach right here. So I really, matter of fact, our CPA just sent us a note and said, hey, Finally, I, I, I've got your automotive related expenses right where I want them. And uh, I said, good. And I said, well, they're not going to really change. You know, I'm going to keep it here until and for the foreseeable future. Um, well, but, that's you the, know, that's the thing, though. Right. You, you have a budget for it. Right. It's mm -hmm. it's it's not that you're you're necessarily overspending or spending recklessly, you know, as, as you, you can budget for the fun stuff. You know, you're. Your wants versus needs, right? Your wants are okay as long as you're not going nuts and you're covering all your needs first. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I I I said this to a person yesterday. They're saying they're you know kind of struggling, and they mentioned that they went out for Valentine's Day, and he he knows who he is, and and I and he said, you know, we had a very modest dinner, which I'm really proud of him. He's young, and he goes, you know, I had a couple of beers, and I said, no, no more beers. That that that's a, that's a want, and I said, I know you're going out, but Right now, listen, reward yourself with that beer when you've got five grand in the bank. You know, I mean, be that tight right now. Um, every dime, if there's extra money, it goes into savings. And the thing that a lot of people don't realize when you look at it and you operate that way, what's going to happen is you are going to, um, God, it's going to just catapult your savings. And you're going to be in such a business in life doesn't get easier. A lot of people think that, oh, okay, so I'm going to crank it out in my 20s and it's going to make my 30s easier. I personally didn't see that. I had a really good lifestyle in my 20s. I wish I would have just kept it wrong. I've said that a million times. Um, I had the right outlook is, you know, as you start to evolve and grow, the intensity of the situations and problems grow too. It's that hopefully you get better at handling them. And finances is definitely one of them and so you know it's it's going back to that year five you know and the, the, the outlook of things is that um you know where where do you put your, your marketing is you ask that so many so many people we're talking to somebody the other day and they're they're telling us yeah i'm going to spend 1500 bucks this agency's going to go it's like whoa 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 wait wait a minute wait a minute you're going to spend 1500 bucks with somebody man i mean that that is just we don't spend 1500 bucks on marketing stuff. Um, I'd have to, I mean, I'd have to, I'd have to dig deep into that and see what the hell that comes with. Right. And I'm not sure you're just going to take their word for it. Did, 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 did you talk to some of their clients? I mean, you got to dig deep now, once you're into, you know, profitable and maybe your side digs just supporting your, your main business and things are rolling, but you say, okay, hold on. I'm going to keep my side gig going. I'm going to try this, marketing company a buddy of mine's using he's having huge success selling big ticket items uh, i'm going to try this for a month if it goes good for a month or two i think it's time to to give up my you know my side gig that's another story i like that outlook um building up relationships is is where where do you go to build those relationships up in your local market there's really cheap places to go to build up relationships uh, in your town. I mean, your community communities are filled with Toastmasters. They're filled with Rotary Clubs. They're filled with Chamber of Commerce. Um, there's there's so many places, lead generation groups. I mean, dang, even going to your local car culture and and, and, and talking to them and being there, constantly getting engaged. Um, I like what Oscar calls this is transactions. You know, is that you're taking and when you're having these discussions, you're actually building up future transactions. There's transactions. Uh, so I'm thinking about those things as bookkeepers, um, deeper CPA engagement. Instead of having a CPA to send your quarterly, yearly taxes to is maybe now 
at by this time is you're having, you know, quarterly or monthly or, you know, in some cases, weekly reviews with your CPA is that I was really good when we were spinning. I would call her up and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? Uh, because I wanted to look at is could I write it off? Is that if I couldn't write it off, if it was going to be income for me, no desire. So she said, okay, tell me what you're going to use it for. Tell her, yeah, you write that off. Let's try it see how it goes. Then when I told her I was giving it up, she's like, yeah, good. I'm kind of glad to see that. Let's see where the, where the economy goes. Now, the flip side of that is my tax liability this year is going to be a little more. I put a little more money away in savings, right? So now I got to pay Uncle Sam a little bit. So it's a balancing act. The other thing is, yeah. is that people often talk about the value of their companies is that when you don't show much actual income for the company is guess what happens is that the value of that company is kind of questioned is that but on the same token we kind of live off our companies and we want to we want to lessen our tax liability so i mean that's serious conversation and really you don't have to worry about it unless you're going to sell your company maybe maybe one two three years out you start thinking about those things but again more reason for deep cpa engagement and a really good cpa Last year, I tell this story. I sit down before our taxes were due and had a one-hour conversation with our CPA. That one-hour conversation ended up saving saving us twenty-six thousand dollars in both federal and state taxes because we were able to, to to take and give her the the big picture outlook that she just wasn't seeing. Guess what? We're doing it again right now. She's got all her books. She doesn't think she's got too many questions, but I want to run through. It's worth spending an hour and paying her for an hour of her time. To make sure that's that's the case so now let's talk about intermediate those people that are at that you know that five to ten ten twelve year point uh, uh point in their careers some a little sooner some a little later it's all going to be dependent right this is just suggestions here um intermediate help is scaling how are you going to scale your business in the early days honestly with one or two i'd, I'd keep your till you get your profits really where you need it i keep a really pretty tight staff um unless you're just rolling in it you know if you've got a lot of wholesale accounts and you need a big staff and you're and you're making money and you know your cpa you're paying taxes you're doing all the right things well different story most of us though is how are we going to scale this thing <clears throat> how are we going to continue to grow and how are we going to continue to profitize but as you grow in those years the one thing the demands on you are going to start changing so to put yourself into the shop and working you know in your business is going to become tighter and tougher because you're working on your business so intermediate help in the form of staffing you know developing that culture is how do i find people uh create such a great culture and such a great way about you and such a get get good imagery that your customers are sending their kids to you their nephews their friends college graduates high school graduates all these different people you're getting approached for people wanting to go to work for you that is really where you want that and then manageable growth. Um, I know I, I I read something on social media on one of the, the fast growers in, in, a, in an industry I watch, and they're really struggling right now. Is they, they grew so quickly that quality control became an issue. Um, their, their reputation and their culture became an issue. And all of a sudden, they're really struggling because what they were known for is what they're being not known for anymore. It's exactly what they're struggling with, and they've kind of lost their way and they've lost their identity. I hope they can come back. You know, I hope that they can pop back, shrink it back down. But it's a hard thing when you start rubbing customers and your fan base the wrong way. Is man, that's that's really tough. And so you know, it's it it's it's the staffing issue is really important. Most people don't understand it. They don't understand how to build a culture. They don't know how to stand, uh, to build build staff up they're terrified of, of of teaching people too much and that's that that th those are all um, ways to go straight off the cliff uh, it's the wrong way to look at things so manageable growth growing in at a, at a reasonable rate uh, that you can manage it and then outsourcing again um, all of your bookkeeping your taxation your CPA your all of that kind of stuff even even looking for a building as you as you grow is outsourcing that to agents, you know, and letting them start to do the things and looking for the groundwork and, and what you're looking for doing is that you got to be able to outsource thing, your marketing, your, your marketing um, support document um, 
uh, building and printing, all those things you can outsource. And it's really important that you learn how to do that. And now let's go into my, my favorite se section of it. I like, I love the advanced side of it because really the advanced starts when you're new of just starting to know what's out there is that, you know, thinking, thinking big, but, but realizing you're small. And so is, um, you know, aim small, um, hit small, you know, type of thing is, is, is really, really target yourself to where you see that out in the distance and that's a goal. And then you put your back, your, your face down to reality. So in the advanced help, um, much of it's the same as above. A lot of the things that we just, it's, it's just good common practice, but what comes into play as you get into your advanced years <clears throat> and your business really starts to grow is managing cash flow. Uh, Jeff Brotman, one of the guys at, uh, Costco was one of our customers and he wrote a book. He was co, co writing a book about Costco, this kind of the Costco story. And he asked me one time, he goes, you know, Rennie, what's your, your, your top three um, biggest struggles as a small business. And I thought about it. And one of them was payroll. I said, it's really tough because we're managing credit cards coming in. And so I told him my, you know, my, my, my three, we discussed it and I turned around and I asked, I said, you know, Jeff, what's your, you know, what's, what's Costco's, what's their big struggle. One of them was was cash flow and payroll. Is that they've got a line of credit available to them because again, they're putting so much mass numbers out there. But the credit card's coming back and paying vendors. Um, you know, it's 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 paying leases uh, on the buildings, uh, new construction, all this different thing. Is that can you imagine on that side of it, the the management, the cash flow management's just got to be huge. It's no different on your small business. Is where are things go, going now? Where do things need to go? And then where where are things at is in, in, in the line of cash? Right in line with that is that I've always believed in for the last 25 years, a good line of credit is that we've used these things for different sources, uh, for different growths, for different. We don't misuse it. It's It's been a great tool to have lines of credit within our business. It's been very helpful. Um, and then also. In, in your advanced stages is multiple streams of income is this is where you could come in and start other businesses up within the same industry um, or in different industries, uh, real estate purchases, real estate management. Um, you know, you could, you, you've got your house. Well, why, why not keep your house and buy another house? So, you know, the income realized from real estate is a little different than income realized from, from, from blue collar working. And so there's some real advantage of that. Um, real estate purchases in the form of raw land to build a shop, all these different things you've got to be thinking of, and then bigger investments, investment into your retirement, investment into medical savings, investment into your staff's retirement and medical savings, um, vacations, uh, kids, education, all these different things as you start getting into this, it comes back, you can start seeing a lot with cash flow and the management of cash flow. And then one the things that people don't look at we talk about as entrepreneurs is your exit strategy and i really think it's better to to you know talk about that earlier you know you don't want to do that really too much and not at all in the in the in the in the beginning stages in the intermediate but as you start getting successful and you you know you own things is and you hit you know a certain age i'd probably say you know right around 50 is you need to start looking at okay where where are we going with this What's going to happen? Are we going to keep it as a legacy? Do we have family going to come in? Um, are we going to keep it and have people run it? Or are we going to sell our business? Detailing companies typically don't have a lot of value. But I'll tell you what they do have value to is when you have them tied to real estate. Uh, the other thing is we just had a, real, uh, a, a detail company sell for a significant amount. We've sold um, several businesses is, is, during my career. Um, not for huge, huge money, but money, solid money. Um, by comparison, though, now you've got some of these really nice super shops that are turning some really nice profits. And they're having, you know, entire families come in and, and, and a family can live off the income of these things and run a really nice business. And some of these things, some of these businesses are getting pretty impressive numbers uh, that I really probably never thought that I see during you know my time in the in the industry but it's starting to happen that's rare most of us run small family mom and pop which is great 
there's still value in it. And the thing I would look at is selling it to your staff is having a tradition go on. Part of it's a gift. And then you maybe wet your beak off of it the rest of your days or for a set amount of time. And then guess what? They turn around and do the same thing 20, you know, 20 years later. And so those are all different things that you want to look at. Again, we could get into this, Chris. We, we, we could spend, you know, two days on this, three days on this, just going into when, when to look for assistance and everything else. But, you know, it seems that the economy, we just don't know where it's going. We don't know where it's at. It just seems all over the place, right? I thought we'd be in a little more dire situation. Um, by this time, I really felt February was going to be kind of a little uglier than what it's turned out to be. And it actually hasn't yep. been too bad. But there are people hurting, um, especially the newer crowd that hasn't really seen here on the West Coast, especially where we've 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 gotten a pretty significant winter. And, um, you know, Southern California is not used to rain and winds uh, winds we get. But the rain has been a real a problem for a lot of people on the West Coast. And, um, it's, still, and the snow. it's still it's still like other places summers, though. <laughs> right. You know, it, yeah, it is. It is. But our hey, people wanna, freak out at drizzles, you know. That's right, or 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 even just the 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 mention of it on the news. Yeah, you know? and so um, I wanted to circle back on something. You know, one of the things that's a common uh, topic in a lot of our podcasts is relationships, and mm -hmm. uh, and and needing help and being able to get the help and support you need um, ties right into your relationships too. You know. Um, it does. You know, there's it, there's a note here that uh, we actually uh, skipped, and uh, it's you know even if you know what to do and how to do it, you sometimes just need someone you could trust by your side, right? So yeah. people require connections to thrive, and strong relationships are a powerful source of of motivation, inspiration, and accountability. And I actually think that's a pretty pretty important reason to be building those relationships and to not kind of put yourself on an island and, and just be out there all by yourself doing this. Um, Cause when you need that help, or even if you don't really need that help, you still just need that, that cheering section there right by your side. Well, it, and, and that's important. And it's you know, just somebody to come to and to be honest with them and to be able to know that they're not going to drain it out to the rest of the world. You know, that they're not going to sit there and, and belittle you and tell friends and family and, competitors and everything else and mention you by name and and, and it, it's important the other thing that's really really important is that um your the information you're gathering the input you're gathering from people is it's vetted that it's an it's a it's the person's not throwing out a bunch of theories um you know i've got somebody in mind that get, is is really good about giving business advice but their business is in shambles you know, and they've got they've got employee issues constantly. Um, they've just never really this that many years into it, you know, I don't know, 14, 16 years in. And to me, they're just I think, Chris, you put it on here earlier. Is they're kind of spinning their wheels. They're doing circles around themselves. And, yeah. you know, it's it's sad because they've got the attention of some some younger entrepreneurs. And I think they've given them some really poor advice. And they've been a bad living example of how to conduct business and really how to even conduct themselves is that they just haven't done a, a real good job at that. And, um, you know, it's sad because they they do have ears um, on them. And, and yet a lot of their stuff is just bullshit repeated theory that they, they themselves haven't been successful at doing. And so you got to be careful of who you allow to get into your head. You know, you really do. Um, you know, and, and I think that's so common these days is that on social media, we can make people, you can make yourself look any way, you know, you want. We are talking to uh, somebody and I won't throw their name out there in case, you know, but, you know, the person that they know constantly, you know, showing the world living large that how, how this person that he knows is living large and all these fancy cars and fancy houses, none of them are theirs. They're just posing in front of stuff and, you know, going out to the, to the right areas and being with the right people and they don't even pay the bill. Um, but yet the rest of the world just thinks that they're, 
they're living high and they're all that. And, and it's, it's a complete facade. It's cardboard. It, it's not real. And, you know, it's real easy for people to buy into that. And I've just never, I don't give a shit about anybody else. I, I just don't look at what they have and want it. Um, if, if they've got a, something going on in their life, I dig. I'm going to go make it happen for myself. And I just, and good for them. I'm not envious of anybody. Um, it's just, it is, uh, it is what it is. But, you know, finding those proper mentors and coaches is, you know, it's one thing to get online. God, going back 20 years ago, I read a book and this gentleman had um, really taken and and revitalized a kind of a joke industry. Um, he had taken and made junk very profitable. And he was a multi, 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 multi uh, millionaire. And so I reached out to him and um, <clears throat> we had a chat. Turns out he's an, a car guy, he's an aircraft guy. And six degrees of separation, it turns out that we've got a mutual friend um, through aviation. So this guy invites me to go down to Dallas. We had an office in Dallas at the time. So the next time I'm down there, I went and had lunch with him. And, you know, for a couple couple years, he really um, he changed my life. It cost me, you know, it was pay to play with him. Um, but he mentored and coached me on, on taking the business to the next level. And. You know, you could see his – now, he was real, if you can imagine, you know, Dallas Flash, you know, Dallas Fort Worth Flash back in the 70s and 80s, you know, old oil money kind of Flash. This guy's that way, and I'm just not that way, but he was the real deal. I mean, he had, he had, a, lot of, he had a lot of money and successes. Um, he changed my life because he was the real deal. <coughs> so I think that's what we've got, and, I, you know, I really want to thank – you know, this was aimed more really at the new people, you know, is that you're struggling, um, you know, try to try to take in and, um, you know, look at this with the right eyes. You're going to make it just, you know, settle down a little bit and, uh, you know, it, it's going to happen for you. Uh, but face your realities. And, uh, you know, it uh, there's a thing and we call it when you're dropped off in a helicopter is is not everybody gets it. I've gotten it only. I've gotten it a few times, if I'm honest with myself, called drop drop shock it is when you're dropped in somewhere, especially the few times I was dropped off completely by myself. And drop shock is you know, when, when you look when you look around and that helicopter's pulling away and you're it um, or even there's a small team. And you've got a very a, a very daunting challenge in front of you. Um, it's you're you go into a little bit of shock. And, and right now, I think we've got. I think there's 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 a constant door of people in the industry uh, and in small business and especially in service businesses that are kind of in drop shop. They've been dropped off. They had a little success, but now it's it's time to go. And they're they're a little shocky and they don't know what to do. And so I hope this helped you today. And, and uh, you know, the key to getting through drop shock is realizing what our mission was, uh, taking a deep breath, going with our plan. Uh, the first. The first thing to die in search and rescue is the plan. Um, it usually just falls apart and we have to go to, you know, planning on the go. But we always have a plan until the plan doesn't work and then we make another plan. And we call it super Gumby, you know, just be super, super flexible like Gumby. But Chris, I think thanks for putting you put a lot of this together. Uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed it. A lot of notes. Um, I want to tell everybody good morning and, 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 and uh, you know, take and, and appreciate you guys uh, attending. Um, make sure to, to share, like, comment, let us know what you want to hear about. Uh, the, the podcast continues to grow. is And we love to hear if we've made an impact on you today. We'd love to hear about it. Is that send us an email. It's Rennie, R-E-N-N-Y, at DetailingSuccess.com or Chris at DetailingSuccess.com. But yep. if we've made an impact and you learned something, we'd love to hear it. Awesome. Chris, well, thanks, here. guys. Guess what I'm doing yep. today? Adjusting headlights. That too. Oh, we never found out. No, nobody, nobody really asked, which I'm surprised. Then but I'm I want to know. Tell. <laughs> no, they're gonna. You have to have to wait till the next podcast. And if anybody asks or sends us an email, we'll share it. How I got off All the right. mountain successfully last night. So with Mater the Jeep headlight set, you know, my God. That was unreal. I'm not kidding you, man. I got out at one point, looked at the beams, and 
most of them were going anywhere but on the road. <laughs> Unreal. So, all right, guys. Hey, man, you guys have a uh, you guys have an amazing day. Go out, and make it powerful. Be real with yourself. Remember, you're not broke. Nothing's wrong with you. You just got to fix what's going on in your life. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next time. Okay. Thanks for listening to the Rennie Doyle podcast, brought to you by Detailing Success and PNS Double Black. Listen to new episodes weekly and be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And don't forget to share with your friends and colleagues. 